If you've made it this far, we're pretty much in the home stretch. Um, we've got most of the design done, not all of the design done. Uh, we're design decisions made. Uh, the structure, the, the, the gravity, and the lateral elements are modeled. Um, and our mechanical systems are basically in place. Um, before we go into the last bits of our architecture, which we might not have transferred over from Rhino, um, I'm going to point out a few things that I would take care of at this point, just a little bit of, of Revit and architectural housekeeping um, that you might want to pay attention to before you go um, any further. Um, the first thing being your canopy. So um, I think we've noticed a lot of people haven't drawn in the structure for your canopy, but your canopy is essentially just another layer, uh, another level, right? It just doesn't have walls around it. I mean, some of you do even have walls around it. Um, so that would be the first thing that I would do. Um, you can always create a new canopy structural plan by going to view, plan views, structure plan, and canopy. I already have a canopy um, structural plan, so um, if you, you're not seeing it, you probably also have one, or you don't have a canopy level, in which that case you need to make the canopy level. Um, but you can always uh, uncheck do not duplicate view if you can't find it in the structural plan uh, in the pro project browser, for instance. But let's go to that, um, that structural plan here. And I know a lot of people were having problems being able to see the level below it, and that is an issue with something called the view range. Now, the view range is sort of limited, usually to the level below, for a very particular reason, uh, but you can always change it. You can change this to unlimited, um, and if you change the bottom below the view depth, um, it won't allow you to do it, so this bottom either has to be at or above the view depth level. Um, so here you can see, um, I mean, there's no, no change really below any of the elements, um, but if you did have like a triple height space or something over here, unlimited might be, be better for you. Um, so how would I start to go about this? I would go to structure, column, and I would start to place some steel, um, some steel columns here, and you don't have to uh, put concrete directly on top of concrete, right? You can put steel on top of concrete, you just can't really do concrete on top of steel. Um, so that's a really good rule of thumb for this class. Um, so in my plan, I would start to place some of these columns here, and then I would start to come into some design decisions. I know I want a wall here to disguise my mechanical plan, uh, let's change this to medium to show you where these ducts are. This is sort of a, a large return duct. Um, but I still need the structure to go up to hold that both that wall and the canopy up. So I would go ahead and place that structure here. And I would just place it out of um, uh, steel. But when we get to an element that already has concrete below it, you have an option. You can put steel on top of it or you can put concrete on top of it. So I'll put steel on top of it over here. Uh, but when I get to the elevator shaft, what I'm gonna do is make this into a rectangular column, uh, sorry, a concrete column. So I would right, right click this and then um, create similar. Um, so I'll just place these here. And the exterior of my building needs structure as well. So keep that, keep that in mind. Um, Wherever the wall is going to go up to, there's going to have to be something that is holding it up. So I'll just go ahead and finish these out. Um, and then you have a, you know, a design decision uh, where it's like, well, maybe I do want these to be concrete because this would have to be, uh, it might be easier for this to be, to be concrete. So I'll just place these as concrete as well. And then I can go ahead and tab over and delete this. So that is the first um, step that I would take when we're at this point is sort of finishing out the structure for the, the roof. The, um, the second measure that I would take is to focus a little bit on where the, the openings are. Now if, you, if, you, if you've drawn the floor plans with the openings like literally as holes then you would have to maybe adjust this um, in the profile of the floors but if you have them as shafts I would just make sure that for instance here because people will be walking on this, um, even though there's elevators below it, I don't need the elevators to go to the, to the roof, so I'm going to um, pull the shaft down a little bit. Um, 
so so that would be the the second step is just um, a little bit of, of housekeeping in terms of, of the openings um, then I would focus on the structure that I already have um, so here you can see that some of these beams might be a little bit too low so I would spend a few minutes just making sure that these are at like a zero offset right now we can see that um, this would all be you know taken care of in terms of be people being able to walk on top of this um, on top of this element. Um, the next move I would make is to go in and adjust some of the walls. Um, now I have some walls here and you, you might have your walls already done. In that case you don't actually really have to model anything. Uh, but in the case that you do have to model something, um, you might want to start from the ground up. So I'll go down to a floor plan. It's best to do the architectural walls in a floor plan. And keep in mind when I go to architectural wall, architectural, we can't really use structural walls for this. I mean, you, you can, but um, the structural walls typically go um, uh, in terms of depth. So that's why they use structural plans. But if I change this to something like a uh, generic 12 inch, you can see that that changes to height. Actually, I have a choice now. Um, but then we can make sure we're, we're drawing this on the right um, level. So here I can go all the way to the roof. Um, so let's let's like delete this wall and actually I want this to go up to the canopy and draw it in. Always pay attention as well to where you're drawing it. So here I'm drawing the finish, finish face exterior. Um, and if you want it to switch, you can always, um, you know, pull it in one direction and um, hit a space bar to, to flip it. Uh, you can also select the wall and you can flip it, um, flip it here, uh, depending on how you placed it. Um, or, uh, and this is going to be especially um, relevant if you need to just adjust your walls because you maybe had used your Rhino model to, to bring them in. Um, use the align command or the align tool. So here you can adjust all of your walls so that they're basically adjacent to your structure. Um, and then your whole system will be sort of a, a curtain system. Um, take this wall, this is sort of an in-between. Now this would be okay, you know, your, your structure is going into your, your wall. Um, if I look at it in 3D, um, you can see I'm missing a wall here. Um, I'll show you how to edit that in a bit. But um, what if I wanted to express this structure for, for some reason? Um, now, you can go to the ground view and you can literally just drag this to the inside. Um, and this is going to be the same method for a curtain, for a, for a transparent curtain wall. Um, and just really quickly, speaking of transparent curtain walls, that's going to be the next series of tutorials. Uh, but you have the option here to make them first opaque, just as generic 12 inch or 8 inch walls. And then we can change them later. You can even see here, I'll show you, I can change this to a curtain wall. And now if I go into 3D, it's transparent. Um, so keep in mind, you can always change these to transparent later. So you, if, if you're using your Rhino model, for instance, to model by face, then we can change those to, to um, full curtain walls later. Um, but uh, let, let's just show you here what I can do. I can select the wall that I just drew and I can edit the profile. So if I go to a front viewer, this is a south elevation. I can also draw based on um, you know, these snaps. Um, so I would want to go to this wall and then use um, something like the trim extend tool, uh, which is TR, and then you can select these. Whoops, I don't think I drew that, but Here's another method. We could just drag this out. Um, all right, I'm not sure um, why that was happening. I think it was just constrained um, to something. So here, let's just go ahead and align it to this. And then um, we can draw a line here and use uh, trim extend. Um, so there you go. And then you can do the same thing here. Just bring that up or bring that down.
Um, so while we're on the subject of walls, um, we can we can finish with the, the roof here in this tutorial, this sort of guide. Um, what would I do here? And I mentioned earlier that I wanted a wall here to sort of hide my um, structural systems. Um, we're basically just finishing off the model, right? We're just modeling the last elements. Um, so here I would need a, a floor. And then that floor, the, the shaft is too high, so I'd have to bring that down. And then to disguise that, or basically be the, the front for the elevators, I would need to go to the, the roof level and make a, um, a wall around this. So let's go to wall architectural. And I have a couple options here. I'm gonna use the center line so that I can absorb this structure. Um, I'll just continue with the center line. Let's just draw that out and then I can again use the align tool and just make some decisions here as to where I want my structure to be seen, where I want it to be hidden, and where I want it to be um, absorbing my, my structural elements like the um, you know, this would, this would be fine. Like we can, we can work with that because it totally absorbs it. Or I can, you know, drag these elements out, um, and drag these elements out as well. Um, so that is, uh, that's it for this tutorial. Uh, and we're going to be going into curtain walls and windows next.